Welcome back, everybody. It is animation week in Photoshop today. Uh, in this video, we're going to be discussing the timeline features of Photoshop, uh, and we're going to briefly touch on how to make a frame-by-frame -frame animation and a timeline animation and export an animated GIF. Okay, so I'm going to click on Create New, and we are just going to go to Web, and uh, let's just do Web Medium, and we'll just kind of create a, a blank little document here. Um, so you can adjust uh, the Photoshop workspace to best meet your needs by dragging and dropping all of these little panels. Um, and I mention that because in order to do what we're going to do today, I need to open up the timeline panel. Timeline panel is where you can animate things or deal with video in Photoshop. Um, so I normally deal with photography or editing pictures whenever I'm in Photoshop. So I like to have my layers up. I don't normally need to have paths so I could drag that panel out. I normally do like to have channels. I do like to have adjustments. I don't always use libraries, so I could get rid of that. Um, I do need properties and color, but I don't often use swatches whenever I'm editing pictures. Now, I do like to use um, my history, so I can pull that up. And if I wanted it to go in a specific spot, I could just drag these words um, anywhere I want. I could put it over here, right beside my toolbar. Uh, that might look a little stressful for some people. I could also, what's called, and putting a panel in a specific location is called docking it. Now, if I just have it kind of hanging out here in the middle of Photoshop, that's called floating a panel. But if I click and drag it and put it in a specific spot with combined with other panels, then it has been docked. And I can put my actions panel over there as well because I do use actions quite often. So whenever you have a workspace, oh, and if I didn't want to have this one, I could close the tab or close the panel and it's gone. If you have a workspace that you like, uh, you can save it by going to Window Workspace and then clicking on New Workspace. Uh, give it a name. We'll call this Photo Editing Workspace. <clears throat> if you had created your own keyboard shortcuts or edited the menus or the toolbar, which all of which you can do in Photoshop, you could save that with it, but I haven't done any of that. I've just arranged my panels. So I'll hit Save. Now we are going to be using the Timeline panel, so I'll pull up Timeline. Um, and I'm probably going to want to have, actually, no, I think this will be pretty okay for what we're going to do. So I'm going to save this again, and we will just call this workspace um, Animation Workspace, and we'll hit Save. And if you want to switch back and forth between them all, they're just right over here. Photo Editing Workspace. I should have gotten rid of Timeline. If you want to get rid of Timeline manually, go to Window and uncheck them, and they'll be gone. Um, okay, so window, we'll check timeline, and here we go. Um, so that brings this panel up at the bottom. If I didn't like it there, of course, like we said, we can drag it somewhere else, but it does work best at the bottom because you need the long horizontal area in order to animate. Um, now, I feel like the best way to showcase the animation function in Photoshop is to create a frame-by-frame -frame animation. So in the timeline panel, I'm going to click this little uh, downer pointing carrot and change it to create frame animation, and then I'm going to click on the words create frame animation. And I have one little frame right there. We know it's one frame because I have the number one right there. And it's displaying in the thumbnail there a preview of what's in that, which is just the white rectangle because that's all we have. And then at the bottom, it tells me how long that is playing for, uh, which is like barely any time whatsoever. Beneath that, we have how many times it's going to loop, how many times it will play through. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to create a couple different solid fill layers. So do solid color. We'll make one that's red. Let's see. Let's make another one. This one can be some shade of blue. We'll make another one again. And this one can be green. And the next one will make it yellow. Okay, so we have four different colors right here. What I'm going to do is hit this button that looks like a page turning. You've seen this icon before. This is basically the create new button for whichever panel you're in. If you're in layers, it creates a new layer. If you're in paths, it creates a new path. If you're in brush, it creates a new brush. Uh, we are in timeline, so it's going to create a new frame. 
And I'm just going to make a total of four frames. So I can see them one, two, three, four. I've got four frames right here. If I click on one, all I have to do is poke out the eyeballs uh, of the layers that I don't want to see. So on this one, I just want to see red. So I'm going to make sure that only my red color fill layer has its eyeball displayed. I'll now click on two. And we'll click on blue. Now we're not seeing the red because it's just in the layer underneath it. I'll click on three. We'll click on green. I'll click on four. We'll click on yellow. We'll make sure the loop is set to forever. I'm going to select all of these and change the time to just 0.2 seconds so we don't cause any seizures. Let's actually change it to even faster or slower than that. 0.5 seconds. So now it's going to display the red for 0.5 seconds, switch to the blue for 0.5 seconds, and then so on and so forth. And then because it's set to loop forever, it should just keep going until we tell it to stop. So if I hit play, you can see that it changes and just goes from one frame to the next. Um, pretty simple. It's just playing these different layers uh, sequentially. So now if, if we had something else, if we had like let's let's display some words, I'm going to go to my horizontal type tool. We'll change this to white um, and we'll just write out some letters. Let's write out yellow. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Whoops, didn't change because I didn't have it highlighted. We'll make that one and we'll center it. Um, I'm going to go back through. Now, all those new layers that I just created are all displaying here, and all I want is for the word red to be there. Of course, I'm going to have to re-center it. This is easy if you set everything up originally. We'll click the blue frame, and we will now turn off the word red, turn on the word blue. We'll go to the third one. Uh, we'll turn off the word red, turn on the word green, go to the fourth frame, and we'll turn on the word yellow. Uh, so now if we play this through... You can see that I haven't centered all of my layers there, but that, that's really how this works. Um, now, if we wanted to have an image on there, maybe we'll just search for a color wheel. We can pull something like that up. We'll change it so we get high-res images. All these color wheels are ugly for the most part. I'm trying to find one that's continuous and has a, a good flow to it, maybe something along the lines of this. And it's a PNG too, the transparent background. Let's see how it pastes. There we go. All right, so we've got our color wheel here. We'll size this down. We'll put it right there. There it is centered. Okay, um, so now I just put the color wheel there, and it should display that on every single um, layer. I'm going to recenter the word blue. There we go. Green needs to be centered as well. And if I didn't want the color wheel to be on every single one, I could just select the layer where I didn't want it to be there and then turn it off. Now it will still be in every single other uh, frame, but it's missing from the one where I had it. And that, that's pretty much it um, for, for how basically that works. Now if I wanted to save that, I would say file. I wouldn't say save as. There is a... A version there that says there is a version there that says uh, CompuServe GIF, but that is not a way that can save animations. If you want to save animations, you go to File Export. If you want to save an animated GIF, that is, and you say Save for Web Legacy. Um, if you've animated a picture, this might take long time, but if you're animating something that has a smaller amount of files, it shouldn't take too long. Um, whenever you export something as a GIF, GIFs are always uh, in the indexed color mode, um, which means they can only contain up to 256 colors. Uh, you see that in your color table right here. These are all of the colors that are in my document. A couple things to look at in here. You've got a preview of it over here. You've got your file format over here. You have however many colors you've got. Um, down here at the bottom, you can change the percentage of quality. You can change the specific uh, dimensions of this, and you can change how often it loops. Now, if you hit save, that brings up your normal uh, save dialog box. We can put it 
over here, we'll call this animations, and we'll call this example one, and hit save. And there we go. So now if I go to that folder that we just created, and hit play, we can see the animated GIF that we created. Now, I, I'm noticing that I forgot to center the word green, but that's okay. We're not too worried about it right now. Let's, let's make something else. I'm going to, this time, drag and drop a photo in here. I'm going to try to find a colorful image. Let's go to these flowers. All right. We've got our timeline panel up. Remember, if we didn't, we go to Window and check Timeline. Uh, and this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hue saturation layer. Let's drag that out and float it. Um, move the hue all the way to the left. So I've got now a hue saturation layer. I'll duplicate that again. Move it to the right a little bit. Duplicate that one. Move it a little bit. And all I'm doing is duplicating that hue saturation layer and adjusting the hue to the right just a little bit each time. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get that all the way across. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a frame animation that changes the color of this picture. And we're just gonna have it go from one side to the other, um, but if you wanted it to be extra cool, you could have it go from one side to the other and then back again. But that takes a little bit longer. And there we go. Um, so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna Make sure it says frame animation. I'm going to click on the word frame animation again. And I could manually go through here and toggle all of these layers on and off, but I'm not sure if you notice. But I copied that layer 23 times. Uh, so I'm going to automate that for myself. I'm going to click the little fly up menu right here in the upper right hand corner, so one that looks like four straight lines. And I'm going to click on make frames from layers. And what Photoshop will do is we'll look at that document, and for every single layer that I have, it will make a frame for each of them displaying just that layer. So of course what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to delete this first one because what I want is I want a frame for each of my individual hue saturation layers. So if I click on frame two, it displays my second one. If I just click on frame three, it displays my third one. I'm going to select all of these frames, turn the background layer on, and it will turn the layer on for each and every single one of those frames. I'm going to make sure the looping options are set to forever. And I'm not sure how long I want to display each frame. Um, probably the default one, which is like 0 .001. Uh, but let's, let's click play and see what that looks like. Now, currently, I'm working with a very, this is a larger image, so Photoshop's kind of dragging with it. But let's hit play and see what happens. Photoshop's being very, very slow. Let's size this down. Um, so if, if you have this image, what's or if you have this problem, uh, what's happening is Photoshop's yeah having a tough time with how big the image is. This is a pretty big file, so I'm just going to size it down um, to about five inches. Make sure that the dimensions are linked here, so when I change the width, it will automatically change the height, um, and we'll click OK. Before I do that. I'm also going to say edit purge all and get rid of my clipboard and my history. That'll just make Photoshop run a little bit faster as well. I'm not too worried about the fact that I shrank this down and lost a lot of data um, because when I when I export this, it's going to export as a GIF and GIFs are, are lossy files. They're a lossy file format. They lose a lot of data whenever you save them. Remember, I can only have up to 256 total colors. Um, so I'm, I'm really not too stressed out about it. So I'll click on frame one. We'll hit play. This should go a lot faster now, and there we go. And it just plays from one to the next. Let's hit stop. Let's select all these again. Let's see the difference if I change the time to 0.2 seconds. And that's really slow. Let's try it at, let's click other, and let's say 0 0.00001, and hit play again. It's still stuck at 0.2. Say no delay. It should be going even faster than that, but it, Photoshop is getting a little bogged down. Um, but let's say that I really liked how that looked and I did want to export it. Remember, if you're exporting a GIF, you say File, Export, and then you say Save for Web Legacy. Wait.
wait patiently uh, for the dialog box to pull up. The larger the picture you're dealing with or the file that you're dealing with, the longer it's going to take. These are the colors I have down here in my color table. It's 256 because it's a GIF, which is the indexed file format. We will hit save. Make sure that looping options is set to forever. Um, we'll put it back in that same folder. We'll call it example two. Let's just call this colorful flowers. And we'll hit save. It should default to images only for your format. Um, you can have it display as like an HTML file, but we just want the actual .gif file. Now let's go back to it. And we'll preview it to play it. And it's taking a long time here, but there it goes. And we've got our color changing GIF. Uh, now that could be cool because that could be displayed online very easily because it is a GIF. It doesn't look too low quality. I can tell that I'm, I'm missing some color data there, um, but that's not stressing me out too much. Let's do another way of uh, fun things you can do with GIFs. Let's go to this young man, drag him in there. Let's throw a black and white adjustment layer. Uh, we'll make it 10, duplicate it again. This time we'll make it 20, duplicate it again, make it 30, duplicate again, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And then the same thing, create frame animation, make frames from layers. We'll delete this first one. It's like I must have missed one, but that's okay. Select all the others, turn on the background layer, and we can hit, and I'm actually gonna do this. Um, because it's starting out in color, I'm gonna click the flyout menu again, and I'm gonna say reverse frames. I want it to start off in black and white, and then it's gonna fade into color. So if I hit play, you can see that this image slowly regains its color. If I thought that that was too fast, I could do it even slower. What I would probably do if that was too fast for me would be to uh, change the increments here, and instead of having 10 um, where it goes, oh, where it goes from 10 to 100, I would have 20 where it go. It, it, the increments change by five every time instead of uh, by 10. Um, but well, let's leave it how it is. I'm going to change the size of the image again. Uh, we're going to make sure it's proportional by clicking on the link, and we'll change this to four by six, and we'll we could export it again. Now, if I wanted to display this on something like Instagram, I wouldn't hit um, Save for Web Legacy. I would instead hit Render Video. Uh, this does not create a GIF file. This creates an MP4 file, which is like a video file format. Uh, you normally want to make sure your format is set to H.264. Um, right here on Select Folder, that tells you where you're going to save it. We're going to save it in the Animations folder. And if you want to change the name of it, that's right here in the name. We'll call this Black and white example. Uh, you've got your size down there, and we can just hit render. Now, because this one's actually generating an MP4 file, I really didn't need to size this down, but it will help export it faster. And now if I come back over here, I should have a brand new MP4 file, which I can preview. Now, it's not going to loop because MP4 files don't loop, so it's just that split second um, where that video goes from black and white to color. Um, if I did want to put that on Instagram, Instagram actually would not let me because Instagram videos have to be three seconds in length at a minimum. Um, so I would have to duplicate that over and over and over again, or I could do that in something like Premiere if I wanted to. So we'll close that out. In this video, we discussed um, animations and timelines in Photoshop, and we discussed a couple different ways you can create a basic frame-by-frame -frame animation.